So welcome back to uh, part two of the CZ1 series. Um, now this time I'm going to be looking at the sound generation. Let's get straight into it then, shall we? This is where we're going to do all of our editing in this area. Um, and as we go through the series, we'll become more familiar with these buttons. In order to get to the waveform, um, all you have to do is, strange enough, press the waveform button here. You can see here, these are the types we get. So we have a ramp, a square, some kind of pulse, but with a very sharp spike on it. And then what looks like a pulse and sine combination. This seems to be half sine, half square. And then we have these ones here, which are three special waveforms, which are all resonance. These are the ones which emulate filter resonance Let's start by looking at things in the time domain. Now you can see that there's an initial sine wave and then what looks like a sort of squared off part at the bottom. Now it doesn't look, it doesn't look a lot like a ramp wave. Um, but it is kind of there. It helps if you turn the waveform upside down in your mind. I think you can see the ramp better then. In the frequency domain it's actually easier to see. So we get the initial fundamental and then all the other harmonics come in. Again, with this one, it's, uh, it doesn't really look quite like a square wave. It's supposed to be a square wave, but you can see some squaring off um, at the side, but you can't really... It's not really that much of a square wave. I mean, it, it, but in terms of sound, you can see the odd harmonics there. So, yeah, it is sort of a square wave. It certainly has that sort of square sound. It just doesn't look anything like one. This is where it starts to get kind of interesting. Now, this does actually look quite a lot like what is on the front panel. Um, there's a slight bulge in the middle. But yeah, essentially that's it. It's it's a pulse wave, really. It's a pulse wave, but it's pointy. It's not squared at the top. And harmonically, this one really fizzes. This one is like um, a high pass filter, really. This is what's left over if you've got, use a high pass filter and you're subtracting the fundamental. And this, works very well in my opinion. I like it a lot. Now this has got certain similarities again. So you've got that pulse, but you've also got a sign. So in a way, I think we could kind of predict what we're going to see here. Let's have a look. Well, in terms of the way the waveform looks, it doesn't really look anything like that at all. I mean, you can see the sine wave, but it's got what I would normally think of as some kind of error in it if I was doing some editing. Um, but again, look at it though. It's it, it, harmonically, it's it's a sine wave with a lot of a very flat plane of harmonics starting from harmonic two. It's got that fizz to it. It's a very interesting sound. Number five. So, yeah, I mean, the funny thing is that what you see on the front panel does not match what you see on the screen. 
I wouldn't really know what to predict there. Um, I suppose the square parts would make me think that I'm going to see odd harmonics. Let's have a look. It's actually a mixture of odd and even harmonics, so it's a bit like a pulse, I suppose. Um, possibly even a bit like a ramp wave. Okay, so after uh, waveform five, then we get to waveform six, and these are the resonant waveforms. Um, and the way these are generated is somewhat different. But look at them, you know, you can see the um, resonant frequency being generated there. Um, and you can see it going up in frequency as well. It doesn't go as high as um, it would do if it was a filter, but even so, it, it generates that sort of effect. Let's have a look at the frequency. So that's really interesting then. So it goes from 100 hertz to 1600 hertz, and then it stops, and that's the maximum that you're going to get out of it. So in terms of octaves, what have we got then? So 100, 200, 400, 800. So, so it's four octaves it goes over. Let's check the others out as well. I suspect they're all going to be the same in that regard. It's funny, it sounds slightly flat on the um, resonant frequency. It's like it's not quite making it to four octaves. Let's try the next one. I think it's getting as far as the uh, 15th harmonic and then giving up. Still, it's a great sound. It's amazing to think that you can get something that sounds like that, but it's not a filter. So I need to explain how the resonant waveforms work. So in this Music Radar article from 2015, Ollie Larkin, who developed the Virtual CZ plugin um, and later went on to go on and do the Arturia CZ, he explains what phase distortion is and how it works. This is particularly helpful when we look at the part relating to the resonant waveforms. So he, he describes a higher frequency oscillator which is being reset by the fundamental frequency. But it's also being envelope shaped so that you don't get the hard edge and glitchiness that you would do from tra traditional sync. So let's do a comparison then between the CZ and a traditional sync. Right, so I'm doing the sync on the Korg monologue. <coughs> And what's happening is the lower frequency is resetting the higher frequency and we get a very glitchy sound and I think you can see that in the waveform as well. Um, compare that to the CZ then you can hear that the CZ is a much softer sound, it sounds more like a filter, whereas the sync, it does, does sound like a filter but it also sounds like something which is uniquely sync. Right, so what then becomes quite interesting is when you start to combine some of those waveforms together. So let's go back to number four and we'll combine that with number three. So we've got two very fizzy waveforms, but number four is the one which has got the strong fundamental. So it's like a sine wave plus a really strong pulse. So let's have a quick listen to that. So that's quite interesting to look at. So you can see the sine element, but it's now it's got two of those little um, 
pulse peaks in the waveform, should we call them. Let's compare that to the original again. So I'm just going to go. Now, I think the other thing you'll notice is it's gone down an octave. So in a way, by combining at least some of these waveforms, it's almost like you're adding a sort of um, a sub uh, oscillator with it. It's not quite the same thing, but because you, you're not mixing them, but you're just adding waveforms together. But the result is that the waveform doubles its length, which means its frequency goes down, its frequency halves. And so you get this lower frequency. And that could be quite useful in some circumstances. Now what we can do is we can add um, a resonant frequency as well. So I'm going to stick with number four and I quite like number seven because it's kind of it's not so harsh. That's quite a nice sound isn't it? Let's try um, going with number three which had all those fizzy harmonics. Um, as the first waveform. So, and you get really interesting sounds straight away. So if you have a look at the keyboard then, we have this section here, which is the line select. And I've got it set to the sawtooth at the moment. Um, and it's on source one, which means oscillator one. Now it's on source two, which is oscillator two. Now, if you think about that, that means that you could actually have two patches because when you store this, it stores both rows. So you could switch this and it'd be like changing patches. That's just an idea. Um, and then you can combine them together. So I'm going to take the ring modulation off first. Let's just try and do a bit of phasing. So that's a basic out phase sound there. To sort to, so you can see the way in which the waveforms go in and out of phase with each other. Let's have a look at that on the frequency domain. Yeah, that's great to see, isn't it? You can see the harmonics just phasing in and out as the oscillators go in and out of sync with each other. Let's not forget we can do two waveforms for each one. So let's go the whole way on this one. So I'm going to add, um, let's, let's get some rich harmonics in. Number three was very rich with the, the old harmonics. And then if we go over here, uh, let's make this one a square. And then let's get a resonant frequency. I liked number seven. really strong sub bass. Yeah, that's good. The other thing is that we have uh, the ring modulation and the noise modulation. So let's have a quick look at those. Let's see if I can pick some frequencies that really don't get on and let's, let's see what we can get out of that. Um, 
Oh, wrong one. There we go. Yeah. Bit more envelope shaping on that, you could start getting some interesting sounds, I think. Okay, um, now for the noise, try changing the frequencies a bit. It's difficult to see exactly what's going on, but you certainly don't get a neat harmonic spectrum. Okay, well, uh, thanks very much for watching that and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. I learned a lot on this one. There's a lot of features that I didn't fully appreciate. I'll be doing another couple of parts, um, one on envelope shapers and another on performance controls and perhaps some other things as well. So if you'd like to catch the next part, uh, you might want to consider subscribing. And um, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like. That would certainly be appreciated. So until the next video, thanks very much and bye.